Hello and welcome to another episode of Fintech Focus TV with me, Toby Babb. Uh, today, I am delighted to be joined all the way from Washington by Adam Zarazinski. Adam, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Really good. Listen, uh, it's been lovely getting to know you and talking a little bit so, so far today. Um, and we've heard, uh, I've, I've been hearing the story of uh, Inca Digital. Really, really exciting space, as I sort of intimated to you beforehand, if you were to put a bingo of all the hot words at the moment out in the uh, the financial market space, surveillance, data, crypto, you're right in the thick of all of it. Um, you were very, very kindly referred over to me and were introduced to me by Ray Khan, who's a previous uh, guest on the show, who's uh, who's given you the sort of build up of, of the James Bond of the sector uh, with a fascinating background, uh, which I've been hearing a lot, a lot about, and I love that. Um, and, 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 and there's loads and loads of us to talk about, and I want to hear all the journey and all the detail. But before we get into that, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and then, and then the, the Inca Digital story so far, and a little bit about what you guys do, please? Yeah, I'm happy to. I'm um, flattered by the James Bond comment. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm probably closer to, I don't know, whatever the, the dorky lawyer version of James Bond <laughs> That's a book waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, born and born and raised in Chicago, um, and uh, eventually um, through some earlier travels um, and and work internationally, I found my way to Interpol. Um, so I was doing I was doing uh, criminal intelligence work um, in Lyon, France, uh, for Interpol. Um, that is, that's where I met the, the co-founder of Inca Digital, uh, his name's Evgeny. Um, and, and what we were doing for Interpol essentially was, was OSINT, Open Source Intelligence uh, Collection and Analysis. Unlike James Bond, where, you know, like human intelligence and stealing secrets is, uh, is the name of the game. Most, most real intelligence work is, is from open data, you know, um, the bad guys, typically aren't the brightest um, and, uh, you know, post their, their drugs or their guns or whatever Ill illegal activity they're doing on Facebook. Um, so it's just a matter, it's just a matter of finding it. Um, so, so what we were doing uh, back then was uh, going out, finding these um, pieces of human generated information, whether it's from Facebook or Reddit or from a chat channel, um, or, or a website, whatever it happens to be, um, and uh, turning those those pieces of information into data, uh, and then you leveraging an early version of Splunk uh, to combine those data sets into useful intelligence for um, federal law enforcement agencies all around the world. So uh, think the FBI and other versions of the FBI globally. So he and I did that for a while, uh, and then we went our separate ways. So um, Evgeny went on to lead network security for the Bank of France. Um, he's a computer science professor at Sorbonne. Uh, I went to uh, Michigan Law, uh, and then I joined the Air Force as a judge advocate. So I was a, uh, I was a prosecutor for two years, and then I deployed to Afghanistan and did operations and intelligence law for about a year, and then came back and did the same thing stateside. That said, though, nights and weekends, almost um, immediately up upon joining the Air Force, I started trading crypto um, with, with Evgeny. That's how we got into the space. And what we were doing back then was fairly similar to what we were doing for Interpol. We were going out, um, and you know, as I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll discuss further, um, most crypto data is it's open source. Um, it's, it's just a matter of going out and, and collecting it and then finding useful chunks of information in this really large swath of data. So uh, we went out, uh, we collected data, um, we pulled it into Splunk, and then we used that to make informed investment decisions in the space. So um, we did that for a while, we did well, and then we thought, hey, you know, maybe there's something here, maybe we can start um, you know, selling shovels instead of digging for gold. Um, so that was in March, April, 2018. We've run with it ever since. So we, we stopped trading altogether. We started building out um, a full infrastructure for data collection um, and analysis. And now we serve uh, financial institutions all around the world with 
with data analytics on, on the digital asset ecosystem. Which is an incredible sort of uh, turn of events, isn't it? To get from there, there, there to there. And I love those sort of stories. I, I'm, I'm fascinated about sort of startup journeys. Uh, and I love, you know, those sort of, uh, you know, bedroom to boardroom sort of, sort of uh, journeys that people go on. So two, two years you've been uh, uh, running, you know, running a business in, in uh, and what are two years to be doing that? You know, 20, 2019, we sort of uh, finish on, on a high. We sort of, sort of see, seeing the various curves of the crypto hype cycle moving probably in, in the right direction, which has continued to do, right? Uh, you know, right now, as, as, as time of, uh, of talking, it's, uh, it's never been better in that sort of crypto world, I guess, has it? But we, but we also see on one side, this hugely um, you know, uh, tumultuous socioeconomic scenario coming, in, coming along. And in the other, this, uh, you know, this burgeoning sort of crypto story that's, that, that's, that's happening. So you've got this uh, navigation of a business in extraordinary volatile times uh, to, to, to manage both the humanitarian side and then, and, and then the business side at the same time. Tell me a little bit about that journey and how starting a, you know, or running a two-year-old business that would have been just a, ba you know, a baby at that sort of stage of when this, yeah. this really started kicking off has impacted and how you've, how you've managed to do well with it. We were, ba I mean, you're right. We were all, we were babies. I was a baby. I, I like literally knew nothing going into this, mm -hmm. right? I, I knew that I, we know, you know, we know open source intelligence, but that was it. Right. I mean, we didn't even have, neither of us had any experience in financial services um, going into this. I guess two things. The first is I'm always amazed by the willingness of busy people to help. Um, you know, so I, I was leaving the military and I joined this, um, this program, which I'll, I'd actually like to plug on your show, show called Thanks American great. Corporate Partners. Um, and all they do is they help people leaving the military that are starting a new career get settled. Like it can be through connections or through advice, mentoring, whatever it was, um, whatever it is. So uh, we had, I, I applied for that program and, um, and uh, his name is John Palazzo, has been a mentor uh, for me um, over the past two years. And he's, he's who got us our start. Um, we, we kind of gave him kind of the rough um, structure of what we wanted to do and and he made started making introductions uh starting that started getting us on our feet um and and from there his intros led to other intros right which just we just started building out our network um and all very busy people he's he's in the um the c-suite of intelligent cross you know but still takes time to talk to me you know back then it was like on a daily basis um so that that's the first thing just other people helping um mm -hmm. The second thing though is in terms of like ops and actually running the business, and this is crypto or no, right? Um, I, I honestly found like most, I bought like all the usual like literature on how to get, you know, get started in startup. And, uh, and I really didn't find any of it useful, honestly. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 to me, it was mostly like the type of like self-help books that you buy like at the checkout counter in front of like FedEx, you know, when you go like that kind of stuff, it just wasn't good. It just didn't give you any like practical advice. Um, so what, what Ev and I did actually is we, we tried to find companies to model ourselves after like who's, who's operating efficiently and does things a little differently, especially because we were bootstrapped. Right. So we didn't, we didn't come in with a, with a lot of money. So how do we operate on a shoestring um, efficiently and quickly build a product? So um, we, we modeled ourselves uh, after GitLab, uh, the okay. company, um, yeah. if you know them. So they are, um, uh, they're a decentralized team. They work, there's, there's people all around the world and they use their product. They, they use their own product to organize themselves, not only in terms of like DevOps, but also um, like business biz ops, um, we, we just did the same thing. So we set up this entire structure on GitLab um, where all of our operations go there. Everything from all the DevOps side, all, 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 of, all of that um, is what GitLab is really made for. Um, but then we also did the same thing for biz ops. So uh, all of our you know, biz dev people and sales people, everything, everything goes into GitLab 
and that's where we organize and make decisions. Um, and it's worked out well so far. And that was all pre-COVID, by the way. So we are we are a distributed team. Everybody's everybody gets to basically work from wherever they want to at any time they want to. There's no like nine to five. Um, they just need to close their issues and get their work done. Um, uh, aside from like a few meetings, um, and that model panned out really well for us post COVID. Yeah. Um, there's zero slowdown, literally. Um, actually, speed up. You know, with everything that you listed out in terms of where we are with you know with um with crypto markets so yeah wow so 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 this is so the, the sort of structure of the business was actually a strength coming into this so so whilst the you know the rest of the uh the world more or less was, was sort of scrambling to uh position themselves and get used to a new normal this was already your normal right yeah i mean it was honestly just another day in the office from pre to post covid i mean you know we we talked about it in terms of like hey um please everybody be safe. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that, that we would occasionally do is we'd have meetups. So, you know, we would get, it would be just like an open invite um, where everybody on the team could come to one location and we'd be there for a couple of weeks, um, you know, in, in, a, in a shared house or in a, you know, in, in a hotel um, in different locations. So obviously we've stopped doing those, um, mm. but other than that, yeah, it, it was it was absolutely a strength. Um, you know, we we saw, you know, once coronavirus started, um, ops for a lot of companies slowed down, um, but nothing really changed on our end. Yeah, and that was that was, uh, you know, more looking around and identifying who you wanted to be like, and and looking at the efficiencies. I presume it's efficiency led was was around around that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so so it was it was in part. In part, you like efficiencies, but also I would say um, just uh, an approach to talent acquisition too, uh, which mm. you know this is this is your world, right? So mm. um, there are a lot of good devs and and business people out there, right, uh, on the business side that for one reason or another just don't want to go into the office every day from nine to five and be based in New York, mm. you know. Um, so it kind of started out with that hypothesis, like, hey, I, we think that there's a market out there for people um, that don't, that, you know, need a flexible schedule, um, but that can still do really good work. Um, so we, we started out with that. Now, that's grown and we've seen some trends in, in terms of getting good uh, and for us cheap talent. Um, things like um, once you have this infrastructure in place, it's really easy to just plug in uh, people from anywhere around the world. They've got all their training right in front of them. They've got um, issues lined up for them to tackle. And um, we've, we have found a lot of good developers in Eastern Europe, um, uh, particularly women who have trouble getting hired locally. Um, so there are a lot of like highly trained um, tech background women in Eastern Europe that for one reason or another, probably sexism, don't get hired. Um, yeah, yeah. But we scoop them all up and they're all looking for us. <laughs> the perfect mix, huh? So, yeah. so that's, that's, that's the come and, and, I'm, and I'm interested in, in the, uh, you know, the space itself, because as, as I said, you know, so intimated yeah. before, we've seen uh, volatility that's, 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 uh, that's you know, been on a one-way trajectory over, over, over recent years. And as I said, there's been, a, you know, two or three crypto um, hype circles at various or cycles at various different stages. This one seems a bit different to me. Um, you know, there was there, you know the, the the whole ICO craze was probably a little bit unfounded before you know, beforehand. We've seen a lot of skepticism from investment banks in the first crypto hype cycle, uh, you know, where a lot of people got on and it wasn't quite ready yet and lost a lot of money on it. And you know, obviously, others others made. Right now, this is starting to look like it's being taken a bit more seriously. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm I'm hearing constant stories of digital exchanges and and. Uh, uh, you know, growth, growth within within the sector, and and governments and and uh, and banks, investment banks, really starting to take this seriously and move into it, and and it's starting to become a sort of mainline asset class at the same sort of stage. Is is that where we're heading, or is this the next? Uh, is this the next full storm? No, I think you're right. This is where we're heading. Um, you know, I I think from from the viewpoint of of Inca Digital, the technology that we've built, and and this and this applies to to your question on a theoretical level, right? 
um, the technology that we've built uh, is data neutral, right? So uh, to us, um, the hype, the, the general hype doesn't necessarily matter. It's, it, you know, we long-term, um, we believe in the tech, we believe that um, financial institutions um, in addition to retail are going to move into this direction. So, you know, whether it's the ICO hype or um, the DeFi hype, you know, whatever it happens to be, we're kind of neutral when it comes to those things. We will deliver um, data and analytics around those hype cycles um, to the degree that our clients want them. Um, but, you know, if, if Bitcoin short-term uh, sits at 5K too, it doesn't matter, right? Long-term, um, we, we believe that this industry is gonna, you know, this is the next um, evolution of the internet itself, right? Mm. Um, now, all that said, I think you're right. I, I, I think um, that um, many, um, and I should say at the outset, Inca is B2B only. Um, and at the outset, I think a lot of larger financial institutions have moved from digital assets overall being a, being like a passive interest, something where like, you know, there was hype around it. And so they're like, okay, we need to create an office for, you know, blockchain products and let's toss a couple people there and have them go to conferences. That's like what it seemed to me to be for the past like couple of years. But I'd say over the past year, it has absolutely shifted from that to um, these organizations taking it seriously, realizing um, not only the power of technology, but actually giving um, their own internal offices money and power to make decisions. Um, we've seen it, right? I mean, just, just in, our own, in our own dealings, you know, we've got um, a number of, of hedge funds on board now that I, I wasn't expecting. Um, you know, we have the Commodity Futures Trading Commission as a client, and um, they are, they're consuming a lot of data and, um, and looking really deeply into this space. Um, so I, I agree. I think it's, I think it's moving in, um, in the direction of every single bank, every single large financial institution will um, play some role um, with blockchain. Definitely. You, you, um, you, you touched on a point earlier on uh, and we moved, sort of moved on from it, uh, moved on for it, but I just want to bring it back into play. Yeah. You mentioned about your sort of journey into into this and uh, sort of having you know, find the right sort of mentors. I am always always amazed about uh, how people from the services uh, can adapt so quickly into it. So starting a business two years ago with you know as you said um, with no real financial services uh, experience or network, and then to accelerate to where you are today with a uh, you know globally run business which has got a, a pathway in front of it that is tremendously exciting. Yeah. How's that speed of speed of evolution happened? I don't and why know. Do, and, and, and why <laughs> and, and why did why do the uh, why do the services excel so much at, at sort of a, at affording people that sort of you know it can take people twenty years to get that sort of level of experience and network and it seems that you know good service people quite often come out and are able to sort of uh, hack that system to to you know, to move themselves uh, you know further forward and, and you know on the snakes and ladder find the ladder very quickly and move up it yeah yeah i think honestly i mean there's no like secret sauce right and i'm not like i'm not like particularly intelligent at all i i think at the end of the day it probably just comes down to willingness to grind it out you know um you know it's funny because like the way the way that you said it was um, that like two years is amazingly fast from, from where, um, where we were to where, where we are now. And like, when I, when I like, when I take a step back and like, if I was, if I was reading about a company that went from there to here in two years, I would also think like, oh, wow, that's like really fast. But when you're in it, it, yeah. it, it feels like, you know, it's such a grind. Like, right. Like I haven't taken a day off in two years. I, you know, mm -hmm. I work you know, whatever crazy hours, you know, um, and I enjoy it. I'm not, I'm not complaining at all, but um, I think, honestly, I think part of it is just maybe most of it is persistence and luck more than anything mm. else, you know, um, keep keeping at it despite failures or despite people telling you that you're going to fail. And then, and then also a little bit of luck with people willing to help and, and being able to ask for help too, I, I think mm. is also, you know, is also part of it, you know, people like Ray, right, who, 
you know, like I met and I and talked to, and we have a common and shared interest. And um, and he's given great advice over the past year. I'm in connection yeah. and things like that. So um, I think honestly, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Well, look, it's 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 uh, like you say, no secret sauce, but being but uh, being open to people and and uh, asking for help and networking. It's it's it, you you were very humble there about talking about the lack of uh, or the luck that was involved in it. But I think uh, you know when you're putting yourself in the right position, that luck generally tends to find the right people alongside it as well. And having yeah. a great idea and finding the right the right sort of area, which is always the uh, you know, the big part of that. And we touched on that earlier on. Yeah, you know, we look at um, uh, data. Um, you know, the new oil, the new gold, whichever way you want to you, know, you, you yeah. want to term it. Surveillance is is you know another area which we've been uh, which we, which we're talking about consistently and constantly in you know the talked about asset class in in uh, in financial markets at the moment. T tell me about what you're seeing seeing there and, and, and how you're actually add, as a business now adding value to the industry. Uh, yeah. And and you mentioned there the hedge funds and and you know the people who are now starting to you know, to speak to you and, and take you on as as, as clients. What's, what's the benefit that you're bringing to them and how are you helping those companies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll talk it, I'll talk about it within uh, crypto and, and blockchain kind of writ large use cases. Yeah, but yeah. I actually, I think it's applicable beyond that. Um, so I see open data more generally um, having a very um, important role to play across markets. It doesn't matter if that's, it's everything from traditional finance to insurance to even national security. There have been multiple times in my, um, in my military career where important intel is on Twitter before anybody uh, in the national security community had any clue that that thing was happening, <laughs> right? Um, and um, that is the power of open source information. And I think yeah. um, as, uh, you know, as more people come online and as, as, as uh, more people have access to, to fast internet, this is, this is only going to increase. So um, uh, open source information, I think there, there is an important future generally. Um, specific to, to crypto, um, the, the important element is not only that um, all of the important data sets are open source, um, but because crypto is uh, in the way that the markets move, sometimes uh, don't move like traditional markets, it is really important uh, to take an ecosystem wide approach to this marketplace, right? So it's it's not just doing time series analysis on you know, the order books of the exchanges that you're interested in. It's also not just um, you know, looking, uh, you know, using blockchain forensics tools to identify wallets. Um, those are all important pieces to a much larger puzzle, which is taking all of these open data sets, whether it's financial data from exchanges or um, from derivatives markets or uh, technical data, right? Um, doing all of those blockchain forensics, um, looking at GitHub repositories, even fuzzing the strength of code that sits behind these projects um, or natural language data, right? So how news affects these markets, how sentiment affects the markets, mm -hmm. how a decision from the P People's Bank of China um, <laughs> Can, can throw crypto uh, one way or another, right? Um, all of these things um, cannot be looked at with blinders on. They need to be, they need to be look, looked at holistically. Um, and that, that right there is what, we, is what we allow our clients to do. We pull in data across the digital asset ecosystem to include our own clients' data, to include going out and sourcing third-party data where it makes sense. Um, and bring it all together in one place uh, in a clean and consumable format. And then we work with them um, to, to analyze the data in, um, in the way that they need um, while showing our math along the way. So there are no black, bo no black box analytics. Um, they get to see everything that we do, how we calculate things, for example, like a 51% attack cost. There are a dozen ways to do that um, and on a network. 
and and we show all of them at the same time in the math that we used um, to get to to get to the answer. Um, so it's it's things like that um, that are super important for this market, but again, I think um, are going to be more important for for um, uh, multiple industries as we kind of move from these private data lakes to uh, a more important um, open data. It's amazing, isn't it? It's just that it's, 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 there's so many different strands of opportunity and so many things that can be done uh, you know, with greater efficiency, with greater upside. And, 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 I, and I think um, you know, what you're doing here is, is moving yourself into, in, into an area where we've seen um, well, we've seen unicorns emerge, right? There are, there are very similar sort of stories about um, journeys that, that you're on. Um, with companies that have had some, you know, and uh, you know, acquisition in similar sort of areas from companies like NASDAQ at multi, you know, multi-billion level, et cetera, et cetera. So a really, really exciting sort of project of, of where you've gone, as you say, over the last two years, yeah, I, I, know, I know, I feel it having you know, started the business myself about how when you're in it, you never quite give yourself the appreciation of exactly where you've been or where you've come from, right? Uh, and you're always thinking about what more you could be and how quickly you could get to, get to somewhere. But tell us a little bit about where you are now and what the uh, what the next couple of years looks like and what you know what you're seeing as as the, the next sort of exciting steps in the journey for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've um, you know our, our client acquisition hypothesis to date has been to go out, identify maybe ten different verticals um, of of different types of financial institutions um, that are kind of stepping into this space. But you know, earlier this year it was it was a little early, right? Um, and to and to deeply collaborate with them, right? To to understand their needs, to understand their use cases, um, understand how they work as an organization, um, and make sure that we have all of the tools at our disposal um, to serve not only them but every other client that looks in, uh, exactly like them. Moving into 2021, which I agree is is where we're going to see um, an uptick, right? So, um, you know, I kind of, um, I, I liken us to Subway as a data analytics provider, um, part and part because I'm always thinking about uh, food. Um, so, so we have all of this, we basically have uh, a lot of different options for consuming our data, right? So you've got the easy stuff, like all the stuff that's on the board, you can, you can order the meatball sandwich or the tuna melt and all the ingredients are right there. Or... You've got all of these different options for meat and cheese and bread, and there's, you know, unlike Subway, you know, thousands of options for us, and we can make whatever kind of sandwich you want. And um, not only that, but we've got two, we've got tools to um, to to help the people that are making the sandwiches, right? So we have our own machine learning uh, machine learning module. We have our own natural language processing modules, um, and these things are kind of like, you know. Um, the Subway toaster uh, that toasts your bread really fast, or all the, you know, the, the knives and forks that they use to, uh, to put the sandwich together. So we've got kind of this suite of tools, all of the data sitting there. And then uh, we work with our clients uh, to easily put all that stuff together. Um, so we've, we've learned a ton over the past, uh, the past year, um, working with clients like the CFTC, like Haymeyer and the Bermuda Monetary Authority. Um, and we're expecting, just like you said, an, an explosion of growth um, coming into next year. And in fact, we've already seen it. I mean, just, just this month, well, like November alone, um, we've, we've gotten more traction with newer clients um, than I think um, the speed with which it, it has happened, hasn't happened for our company yet. And I think it's because of, it's because of market traction, just like you said. And, that, and that's where you see, you see it's happening, the market you know, driving that, that sort of play and taking you along with the, uh, you know, with, the, with the surf at the same sort of stage. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's a mixture of enthusiasm around price, but it's not just that, right? I mean, I, I also think it's um, um, some, well, there, there's some, you know, it, there's more interest because of the big names that are going into crypto now, right? Um, you know, uh, PayPal, as an example, um, uh, is, was, was huge for the market, right? Mm. Um, but then also, I think, generally speaking, and you, and you talked about this at the start, right? 
the fact that we are at this um, inflection point with coronavirus, with the stimulus uh, packages that have gone through, with the amount of money that the Fed is printing, um, I think there that markets are looking for new uh, new ways to hedge, and crypto is going to be one of those. Do you know what? That's a really interesting point, um, and 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 one that we haven't actually sort of covered on the show. You know, the show too much so far, and we've had you know, nearly a hundred people um, uh, interviewed over the the course of the last few you know, few few months. And I think it's really interesting when you talk about that because the stimulus packages and the you know the, the level of printing is driving you know, you know financial services into a very very different sort of uh, horizon over the next couple of you know, couple of years and and. It absolutely makes sense that you know that, that something like this would come you know, would come along and be as relevant as it has. And is is that what you see as really driving the uh, you know the whole the whole crypto movement at the moment? That sort of and why big companies and and uh, you know, as I say, inv- you know, investment banks and hedge funds and and uh, and governments are sort of launching into it for where where they've probably held back a little bit more conservatively in the past. Yeah, I I think it's it, it's part of it. I mean, I don't I don't think it's the only driver. You know, yeah. even even with like this, like the current price action, it's it's just it's it's a mixture of of multiple factors, right? One of which I think is this, absolutely. Um, but even at you know even at the national level, you know, something that we haven't talked about at all yet is um, kind of like the geopolitical implications of cryptocurrency too. Um, you know, and 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 what this means for um, the West and the United States in particular vis-a-vis um, what China is doing, right, to create their own central bank digital currency um, and what it means for their Belt and Road Initiative and what it means for U.S. sanctions against Venezuela um, and North Korea. Um, all of those things, I think, are also driving some innovation, um, kind of that, that nexus between, um, um, you know, the national security community um, and, and financial markets, I think, is also there, right? Um, um, especially at the government level, they um, they know that these problems are 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 coming. Um, you know that yeah. um, even at the national level, a lot of com- uh, a lot of countries are now developing their own CBDCs. And I know personally, right, that the U.S. government is looking into how does that affect the power of the U.S. dollar globally? How does that affect the power of the um, Western financial system? Um, yeah. What, is, what, what does it mean, right? Um, so, and, and then those things obviously trickle down into, into you know, banks being interested in, in, in what's happening in these markets too, so. It's effectively a, a, a sort of financial space race, isn't it? If, you, if you're looking at that on, and particularly on a, on a you know, political basis with everything we've seen so far. And, and uh, you know, if we look back over some of the rhetoric of the, the Trump administration in particular, you know, with, with, uh, with China and relations out there. It's very, very interesting that to see where, where, it, where it goes on. And that's, that's probably a whole other show to be fair. <laughs> and, and one which, it'll, which will have its, uh, it, its whole question marks around that as well. There's a debate for you, for you, for you to have, which we can move on to. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, we, and we are. So we, you know, we, we work with um, a number of um, intelligence agencies and, and parts of the Department of Defense do exactly that to kind of, to look at not not we're not talking like you know the criminal stuff or or you know terrorist financing type stuff, but um, from a uh, you know a, a near peer competition long term, um, what is crypt? How is crypto going to affect um, global markets? Mm. Yeah. So so let, let's let's I could talk about this for days and uh, and, I, and I've just seen how far you know that we're we're, uh, we're lurching towards over overrunning. So oh, yeah, yeah. so we'll, so we'll, so we will come back on that and we'll we'll talk we'll talk again. But but um you know as we lurch towards the uh, you know the, the the end of the year as I say and and uh, you know this is this is filmed at the very start of December and our, my Christmas tree is echoed by your Christmas tree there behind your shoulder. Um, that's the American style, I, I assume. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got that. I got. I bought that off a of a, a guy at a uh, at a cowboy bar in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a story. There's, this is also another another program that's definitely going to have to have a follow up <laughs> past past watershed off camera. Uh, and, and, and I'm sure there's be plenty of stories, plenty of stories like that, which I'm looking forward to next time I'm out your way, <laughs> which is which is going to be happening. But um. 
I want I want to finish on a on a prediction that we, we you've been um, really fascinating there talking about some of the things that that that, uh, that, that are happening, um, you know, economically, socially, politically within that. One of this, the things of, of 2020 has been crystal balls have not really worked and no, no one really has predicted other than Bill Gates exactly what we uh, we had in store over the course of this year. T tell me a little bit about um, your vision and, and what are the trends that we should be looking out for in, 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 in your space over 2021? I think 2021 is going to be um, a, a pivotal year um, for digital currency. You know, and, and it's just, it's a, it's cumulative, right, uh, of, of everything that, that we have seen over the past few years, right, with even, you know, this, this concept, which I don't necessarily fully agree with, but just that, um, you know, contact, contactless payment as, as a concept and, and how do we move to 100% contactless payment because of things like coronavirus, right? Then we have, um, you know, everything that we talked about with inflation. Um, then we have organized, you know, large financial institutions, even before crypto, starting to take a serious look um, at the blockchain space. Um, and then we have, as you said, this kind of like financial space race that's just starting to happen. Yeah. All of these things are coming together next year. Um, yeah. And uh, so it's going to be a really interesting time um and um it's it's fun too right yeah I mean, definitely uh, it's it's been a lot of fun running into digital um over the past two years and i think this year is going to be um even more so, so. Well, when you when you talk about that sort of um you know coming together that seismic coming together of all of those different things yeah once one side of it can be fear right the other side of it is there is massive opportunity in, in in times like that and when you look at 2020 and and the sort of hiatus that is had on on, on economies um, and businesses in general i think there is this tremendous tremendous opportunity that's going to be coming through with uh, people wanting to catch up people wanting to uh, uh, inject stimulus into into global economies and and i for one am really excited i'm going to be even more excited to see your, your sort of journey because it seems you've got so much right so quickly uh, and i'm really really uh, going to be watching very very closely to see what happens with you guys and i'm sure it's going to be a, a I can absolutely see why Ray, Ray wanted to set this up because it's been great listening and great viewing and uh, I hope okay. everyone enjoys it as much as I've had the conversation as well. I appreciate it and I appreciate your time. Seriously, it was, uh, it was a good conversation and uh, yeah, man, thanks. Likewise, likewise, thank you. And thank you all for watching. Uh, we'll see you soon on another episode of FinTech Focus TV. Adam, thanks so much. Cheers. Right. Bye.